audio. So let's record this. Go ahead. Yeah. Christian, keep going. Working, working almost every day in the CD go home, building tech now. Uh, I'm finishing my 3D printer. We're gonna um, do the CNC torch. And well, yeah, um, everything is going smooth. We're waiting for the next uh, bunch of people on that are coming on September. Okay. It's gonna be a very challenging thing because they're gonna come like 15 people yeah. and well yeah we are getting ready for it and uh, so we, yeah so sorry I didn't mean to interrupt but um so so what's your timeline in terms of um do you intend to stay up to September do you, is your intent to stay as long as possible yes yes okay. so that's that's one of the things I've I've been thinking about lately well I'm I'm very happy about what's co uh, going on here in in the factory farm and I'm doing everything that's possible to stay as much as uh, as, as possible but well I have a visa, a visa issue which I can only stay three months because I've, I'm okay. I'm here as um, with my ESTA visa so okay. it's just uh, for a three month visa so okay. we're doing this curriculum and uh, so we can apply to the H3 visa which is the trainee trainee visa and it's gonna so we were planning to instead of doing a six month apprenticeship we wanna do a two year apprenticeship right. in which we can go more in depth with all the technologies and all the workflow that it's happening here but uh, Chris you so, do that this time? No not at this time is it? Or you, you would do it too? Uh, well, if, if it's something... Yeah, for sure. Like, I'm... I'm more than... Um, I'm, I'm more... Well, I have all the predisposition to do it. Hmm. But uh, it, it, it depends on... on um, well, first the visa, right? And... Um, and how, how is it gonna be conformed? How are we gonna work and, and make it happen? I think there's a lot of gaps now to make a two-year uh, apprenticeship program, but I'm I'm for sure excited about it and, and willing to put the work. Yeah. Well, it's it's nice to get to know you a little bit better. Um, I, I don't know if if Marcin mentioned this, but I discovered OSC only a, a few weeks ago, and so. I'm obviously very excited about it, but it, it definitely helps to get a better sense of what's life like on the ground. And hi, Ken. It's great to see you. Great to put a face to the name. <laughs> uh, 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 hi, Jonathan. Um, yeah, nice to meet you finally. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's great. Um, so look, I, I know you guys are like really under the gun, working in the heat, uh, burning a lot of calories marching i i'd like uh to take your lead a little bit on how uh, best help out everyone on the yeah. this call look at his face of sweat man this is pain <laughs> christian <laughs> says something about the good experience man, i'm suffering <laughs> also are you uh are you living in harry potter's plaza under the stairs no this is actually <laughs> the second floor of the seat home it's got a four to eight foot wall and this is a small section with, with a four foot wall Okay, so okay. You, you mentioned about doing um, something more of an overview of what, what we're doing today. So, so to maybe let's start with an overview of where we are. So I was hoping to actually, in this session, all of us, uh, actually, if you look at the, let's see the chat, did I put it in there yet? No, not yet, but I was going to put it in this document where we could actually write down, like, and possibly have like a little working session as soon as we get, um, so take a look at this doc, but I mean, um, two years. The idea is that 
we're offering something that's much different. And I think it, like a lot of times I was thinking, oh, well, how do we make, make this meet current standards and all of that? Yeah, we are doing that in some way, but I think the, the bottom line is we're, we're kind of creating our own world in some way, which pushes the, the current world forward. With that said, like we've got, so on one side, there's all the you know, tech school ideas that we, we've got. And I think that can fall out of this as subsections of like a two-year curriculum. Like we can, so what I was hoping is we could take, okay, here's the curriculum and now start detailing it out. There's welding, there's 3D printing, like, and just start start working on it one by one, uh, given that all of us here know and want, and like, for example, like Ken and Christian, you guys can say, okay, this is what I want to learn too, because we'll probably have done some of it or whatever already. And, and then <laughs> John, maybe, you can reframe that, okay, here's a welding curriculum, here's what the stand standards are and how we can create a you know, welding tech school or whatever. So there's, there could be like a bunch of modular elements that comprises, but I think the two years, uh, that's where I would like to see the, man, I, I'm excited by that prospect of like 100 to 1,000 people here where, I mean, we are cranking stuff out. Like right now, I feel I feel it's it's good that we're making definite forward motion on prototyping and things. But imagine you have a much more dedicated, larger effort of more people doing that. Then we actually start getting traction, product releases, pipeline, like one after another. We met recently with some engineers um, for structural engineering. We're getting feedback from like some of the world's best, like Bob Berkebeil, um and other people like because our boundaries are open like we're not we're not uh, i feel that the difference is there our boundaries are open therefore we invite everybody to collaborate and that, that makes it all better so um that's where we are but i was hoping we could get into like just just start writing this down and, and in the doc um yeah uh see what we can do in, in a parallel work meeting maybe but what, what else do we have for like big picture overview of where we're at because I was thinking, yeah, like, if we get this two-year two uh, kind of overview, that would be sufficient uh, to go with um, the H3, right? Like, we can, this is our written document, this is what we've got, and we can substantiate it more or less, uh, so that would be a good step forward. Like, like the, the highest level of detail or, like, uh, the big picture view would probably satisfy the H3 thing, which we can then take, and, and you guys, Christian, Ken, you can pretty much crank that, that application out based on what we write at the highest level and then we start detailing more and more and more uh, for other products that come out, education products that come out of this. Okay. Yeah, let, let me just update everyone on the situation uh, with respect to the, the everything I've done since we, we started talking. So um, the Department of Labor has, has not made contact with me yet. I, I only received the contact on Friday. The reason that is significant and, and emailed them like this is our intention will you help us out the reason that's significant is because each state's office has different expectations and ways they like to do things mm -hmm. and to give you some background in virginia uh the lady told me verbatim who's the state director um we want to make things as simple as possible don't give me a lot of detail just give me the framework that you're pursuing and we'll work with you to make sure, and like we give you, we give the employer in this case the benefit of the doubt, mm -hmm. um, which is great. That it, because we have, I hopefully you can see my screen. Yeah, uh, we have a thousand lines. Each one is a task with an outcome mm. that comes from an existing curriculum. So, so we have a database right now of uh, existing industry standard uh, for oh. each one of these mm. tasks. Oh, cool. Okay. Now, um, so, so we have detail. Um, we have a rough framework on the summary tab of, you know, you're going to show up in this two-year program. You're going to get oriented all the way through redesign and build of the Seat Eco Home. And so the way I see this going forward is we, we're moving at the speed of state and federal government. I need to have a personal human conversation with the representative to explain why this program is unique and, and take the temperature on what their expectations are. Um, so that that's the administrative process that is standing in the way of OSE has a approved apprenticeship by the Department of Labor. Now, I think that is the silver bullet for the visa application because you're taking a program that is recognized by one of two credentialing agencies in the United States and you're saying we are we are now this is what we're doing 
And the, according to according to the requirements I read for the visa, that meets them. Um, there's a lot of open questions I have that we should probably talk through, maybe not on this call, but think about um, on the visa application, does the program have to be um, non-paid? That, that that's a question that that I wasn't sure about. There there's some okay. terminology in there about you're not you're not solely doing this for employment, um, and I think we could meet that, but you know that I, that's sort of out of my expertise. Because that's something we have to figure out. Does the does the program have to exist separate from paid apprenticeship? And when I say apprenticeship, I'm using the federal government terminology here of you have guaranteed work hours, a set wage schedule, and a set timeline. Um, another thing to consider here is that, you know, the curriculum that we're building can also become the education pathway. And Marcin, I think you and I have some stuff to talk about with Ed Vera, but um, bottom line is we now have that application process started as well. Um, at this point, I feel like I'm rambling, so so help me out. What makes sense? You know, what doesn't make sense? Well, it was a question for Ken and Christian. Dude, is that stuff? Um, I think Ken. Uh, could I uh, just answer about the, the paid apprenticeship? Yeah. That, that um, basically, I believe that from what I've read, it's actually what, what they actually want to see is how many hours you'll be spending in the classroom, how many hours you will be spent actually working. So I would expect that the, the two-year apprenticeship program would be paid, that there would be some element of, um, because it's so long. Right. Yeah, that, that there is, there is um, some practical work for which yes. uh, the apprentice will get paid. Well, it, yeah, and, and this is sort of what I mean by um, clarifying the intent of the visa program, because... The way that the government defines apprenticeship is a combination of training and job. And job, yeah. So, so, so it, that's that's essentially all it is. It, it just means that you're earning an income while you're learning a skill. Yeah, um, I, be I believe it it does fall under the perfect. visa requirements um, as well because under the visa it just says. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm just having a quick look through. Well, while you look, I'm pretty sure it being, like the way I, the, the tone of the document is, you're not coming to the United States just to work in a factory. Yes, like you're coming to the United States. Yeah, you're coming to the United States to learn something to take back to your country or become, you know, an agent of whatever, you know, uh, pathway that you're pursuing. So, okay. I think we're good there. But um, so so I think that's the update. Um, that you know, in rough estimate. Department of Labor averages two or three day response time to all my communication. And so getting the name of the person and contacting them directly was a big step forward. I still have to wait for them to call, you know, reach me back. And of course, it's the weekend, so federal employees aren't going to be working. So, you know, this week, hopefully I'll make contact and I can start that process. Um, hey, March, do you want me to sort of go into production technologist and explain sort of like what the initial thinking was with that? Hold on, I still have a question on Ken's. Ken, when you mentioned initially, like, uh, the H3 uh, allows people oh. to get paid, I thought you mentioned that it doesn't allow people to get paid. Um, what it says, what it actually says that um, the, uh, sorry, the non-citizen will not engage in productive employment unless such employment is incidental and necessary to the training. So I, I took that to mean that... Um, mm as part of the training that you would you would actually do some hands-on work for which you could get paid okay mm -hmm. yeah but it, it doesn't require it it could be either or right yeah it doesn't require it yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but when it when when it is um when there is uh i think payment it should be stipulated how many hours are going to you expect yeah. to work yeah and how much is going to be paid Yep. Okay. Cool. Um, John, go ahead with the um, production yeah. technologist. Okay. So, what happens when I go go to the Department of Labor and I request I have an employer who's interested in building an apprenticeship? The first thing that they're going to do is look 
to see if there's an existing program that matches what Marchand's trying to do. And they did that, and what they found was a job that was created in 1999 called Production Technologist. It was created by Lucent Technologies, um, to, and and you're looking right now. I'll try and zoom in a little bit. This is these are the tasks that I pulled directly from their work process. Work process in Department of Labor language just means training or curriculum. And so you know. I think it would be beneficial to go and, and actually before we get into the detail here, um, their thinking was they went to the OSE website, they saw OSE apprenticeship on the header, they clicked on it, read through that document and they said, okay, we can turn this into a production technologist most likely. Mm -hmm. So that was the or, that was the origin of this. Now, they didn't know about CD Eco Home, they don't know anything else about OSE, but looking at the production technologist curriculum as it exists, this is like a very small part of what you're already doing. And so what I'm thinking is a quick path forward may be just to add on to this, the things related to CD Go Home. Um, but, you know, I don't know what the right answer is exactly. That may be something of a conversation. So production technologist is, is a thing that, so we, um, Uh, tell, tell, back up a little bit. So, in terms of Department of Labor certified program, this is this is what would qualify for that. So, we we position this as production technologist. Is that the, the logic there? Exactly. It's already registered as an apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. So, the, so rather than us saying we're creating this new thing called the Seed Eco Home yeah, Builder yeah. Creator, or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do we market this? Say, say we're looking for. <clears throat> GIs, uh, vets. Yeah. How do we market it? Yeah, like, does that, <laughs> in terms of marketing, um, does that get in the way of any of that? Like, like, so, so we have this production technology. That's something that we have in the background that's just a thing available. But go ahead. The, the, yeah, the, the thing that the thing that vets care about are: Am I going to get paid like fairly a, a fair wage? Um, is it you know guaranteed work? And the icing on the cake is I get to move to a farm, collaborate on small teams, be a part of something crazy, you know, learn, you know, like if you tell, if you tell the veterans that I've served with, you're going to weld and build a house and learn about solar and, and <laughs> like learn how to honest. live off the grid, you're going to learn how to like be self-sufficient. I've already gotten veterans signed up. Like, yeah, as soon as this thing is GI Bill eligible, let me know. All right. All right. So we're, so the summary is we go forward with production technology. So what do we want to do? Like, look at my thing that I put in the OSC curriculum. Like, um, yep. let's see. So does that fit any? Like, does the curriculum? There's a curriculum. There's a written exam, written cert, written no certificate, certificate, certification, certificate, practical exam, standard com competencies met. Like, do we have stuff like that, or like is this different? Or what else do we need here? Maybe we can start outlining the point. Oh no, I'm just trying to find out what, what, how we can do this here, what we're doing right now. And how does this relate to the thousand item list that you showed? Yeah, uh, so uh, I think there's two ways to go forward. One is we already have this rough framework. I don't know if you can see my screen, um, mm -hmm. but yeah. This this rough framework, right? Yeah. They're going to show up. They're going to learn some knowledge. They're going to yeah. do practical stuff. Um, I pulled this from the wiki, which is essentially the practical and the and the foundational knowledge in a little bit more detail. Yeah. Um, sure. and, and once we build the trajectory from day one to end of two year project, mm -hmm. big milestones, big framework. Uh, then we can go to the trade crosswalk. This is linked directly to the database. And so you tell me, like, yes, we cover building materials and floor frame and foundation, or no, we don't do interior finishes or residential roofs. And then from this yes, no, maybe crosswalk, I can go back and find these tasks in the database and then pull the outcomes and the references mm -hmm. and consolidate all of that onto a format. And so 
you know, I, I would go big to small. So, like, on the email, I suggested we start conceptual. Like, what do you want the progression to be over the two years broadly? Within each one of those milestones, what top, like, trade and knowledge topics do we cover? All I need from you is a yes, no, maybe on the, like, nitty-gritty details tasks to be able to fill out their, you know, the format that they give me. If that makes sense. All right. So you think you can do you can do that cross linking stuff? So look at this. Look at the doc, man. Look at the OSC curriculum. I see. Yeah. Um. End. That's the end. So should we start? Like, uh, here's what we're gonna do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. What are we doing? Um, All right. We're gonna learn. So there's. Yeah. Let's start populating with. Um, I like to think visually here and. I think Paul loves that. Um, so what are we doing there? I know we got free CAD. So should we just like dump micro tasks, micro items? Like there's free CAD. Got no, no free CAD. Um, is that what we do? We start uh, micro. Con so topic areas, topic areas. Then we fill. Uh, is that what we do? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Christian and Ken, where are you? Are you adding? Who's, who's an anonymous turtle? Ah, uh, okay, I get you. All right. Who's an anonymous tootie? Who's an anonymous skunk? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm the skunk. Uh, uh, who am I? I don't know who am I. We're going to need some space here, so I'm going to shrink you down. Welding. There's uh, Wham. Why arc additive manufacturing? Maybe we could start grouping these things later. CNC torch table. Now this is all builds. Like here, what I'm. I don't know if y'all are doing the same, but those are builds. Um, you're learning to build this stuff. <coughs> is there a classroom portion of, um, yeah. you know, the, the, this is the thermodynamics of the house? Okay, so classroom. Builds, classroom. I'm going to put another room called Control classroom. Control is that right? Control C, Control V. Classroom is for the green people. Uh, class. Um. Yeah, but of course we're teaching enterprise too. What happens like in a tech program, like if you're covering, are there uh, tech schools that have enterprises as their core? Tech schools? Eh, I mean, it depends what you mean by enterprise. Um, like, is there, there anything, any, pro, uh, any precedent like entrepreneurship? for, any precedent for a tech school that teaches you to start your own business versus work for somebody? Is that, is that does that exist? Maybe, I don't know. There's there's um, there's accelerators. There are small business workshops, but um, and anything substantial would be like just an MBA. <laughs>
Final project. Can a tech school be where we basically, um, like, it's good, like, if we hire people, right? Like, we can say, oh, yeah, you guys are coming with us. We're going to work together. That's good, right? It's not like you got you have to set up a tech school where they end up working for everybody else. I mean, people can, but that's, that's acceptable, right? Or are there any limits on that part? No, no, no. Well, like Harley Davidson, for example, runs a tech school, and then their techs go to work at Harley Davidson yeah. dealerships. Is that what you're talking about? Okay. Yeah, they're 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 vertically aligned for sure. Mm -hmm. Or integrated, I should say. You see this stuff. We are actually going to get into, I saw some three-phase stuff, three-phase inverters. That's a new topic on our schedule. Hasn't been covered yet. Um, Solar energy, solar energy system, building integrated solar energy. Integrated PV. Foundation slash class. Yeah, Martin, how, how are you? Uh, like, do people apply? Yeah. And, and it and what you know is there are there minimum criteria? Apply. No, sorry, huh? what you said. Did you say do people apply? <laughs> Do people apply? Like, what? How do you select the people? Who apply? <laughs> of course, yeah, you got to do an application. Basics, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Basic. So that, that's interview that's application. It's a video, video letter of interest, and an interview. Um, to to like, if we get serious about this, yeah, there's uh, the current state. We would, um, yeah, yeah, just application and inter interview. Yeah, process. Yeah. And work out the details. Okay. Yeah. Final project would be um, CD home system subsystem design. People are learning to design things in the program. After two years, people should be able to design things. Ken's already designing CNC torch tables, but he learned all on his own. Yeah. Isn't that pretty amazing? Ken's already designing a CNC torch table, right? Mm -hmm. Right, Christian? Yeah. So the final project will be design a small subsystem of the CE go home. Or, yeah. Tractor. Um, I think in the two years we can cover the 
on uh, I won't get into solar concrete yet. Um, Do machining? Yeah. Like metal machining? Yeah. CNC melt. Um, and it's all, um, yeah, I think the synergy comes when there's a lot of people and everyone's teaching each other. Like right now it's like, um, I, I find it like hard because there's not enough people here right now. But once you get a, many more people, you can learn much more and then get into much more cross fertilization when, when people bring in different skill sets. Yeah. So I think the yeah the amount of topics covered could be quite a quite extensive. And then it how is the practical and the foundational balance <clears throat> for the classroom? Well, I would, is it every I day like the mix? I mean, I would ideally it would be like one hour design class, like we're learning just design. Uh, what do you think, guys? Like maybe like one hour just covering design, and then the rest is um, you guys design and then build. So it's like one hour of design, three hours of build, three hours of sorry, one hour class, three hours design, three hours of build, like kind of, that kind of thing. Um, does that sound right? Yeah. <clears throat> and do you think that would be like <clears throat> um, you're going to go through that cycle for each uh, I guess how would we organize it you, you, you go through that cycle for each one of the things in the builds so, so there's a link between foundation and class and the builds or does each one of the builds have its own classroom portion that is then oh, goes man. through that cycle. So there's, um, take a look at the OSC design guides. It's like this, just a skeleton. Have you seen that? OSC design guide? Uh, the thing is, what I envision is we teach a person how to design anything. So here, uh, look at this thing. Um, every like That's what I was trying to do here with the apprenticeship right now, but it kind of got other pressures. But look at the design guy thing. What I envision is that each day we cover one hour of how to design things. Like, how do you design a house? How do you design a bathroom? How do you design a, design a tractor? How do you design a power cube? How do you design a torch table? How do you design an aquaponics system? Edible landscape? Um, so the design matches every single thing. So we can say foundations class for every single thing, like literally copy everything from there. Um, yeah. Shredder. We're gonna make rock shredders or rock crushers too, because uh, that's gravel for foundations. Rock, rock, sh shredder. That could all be in shredder. It'll be in shredder for plastic, rock, and metal. Shredder for mulch, plastic, <clears throat> rock, and metal. Uh, the thing that foundation class is a power transfer, mechanical power transfer. That means transmission systems, gear downs, belts, pulleys, shafts, bearings. <clears throat> and then we design our own bearings and 3D print them and do that. We, we did that already. Um, power foundations of power electronics. So how do you run transistors? How do you switch transistors with Arduinos? Christian, how does that sound? It's nice. Um. So, in final project, it's just going to be the uh, eco home then? Well, uh, it could be like see eco home subsystem design or build. Like, 
like for example, what would be cool is if the next person developed the three D printer to print the foundation forms with waste plastic. Like that's a like holy cow, you can do that. Yeah, but those kinds of projects were, or you can do like here's a an operations plan for the greenhouse t greenhouse aquaponic greenhouse uh, for growing year round food like like pro products things that evolve the system or here's a new wall module system for the CD go home you know like innovation on all the topics that are already included so the final project would be uh, it's like yeah it's it's innovation upon the the bounty of existing work does that make sense mm, yeah. Yeah, sure. And yeah, yeah. how about certain? Uh, how are we gonna tackle certifications, for example? Right. So certificate. So you have to define. That's why I was trying to do this up here. If you see see where I am right there, certificate. Yeah. Um, you have to define what skills, like very specifically, what skills are you gaining? So this, I mean, however a certificate looks, this certifies that that Christian can now uh, connect an Arduino with solid core wire to a transistor and switch 50 kilowatts power with his eyes closed. Uh, I mean, you have to just get like a very specific items, like say, okay, the, the civil engineering cer uh, certificate. And it's not gonna be civil engineering, like this is obviously not like oh, of course. Not licensed. But it's going to be here are the skills you'll be able to do. You will be able to c calculate the deflection of a 20 foot rebar truss using FreeCAD or using yep. first principle calculations, you know, stuff like that. Um, so, as you progress in the two years, would you accumulate these like merit badges? Oh, yeah, know? like the badge idea would be cool. Like, if we could do certificate, badge. Um, icon, like icon for that badge. Yeah. Um, but it's all like define it with words, like very explicitly, and that becomes valuable because now you can measure it, track it, build upon it, you know, and you can combine competencies to say, oh, with these competencies, you should now be able to do such and such task, and it helps the man helps management to say, oh, okay, well, this person's got these skills; they can definitely do X, Y, and Z, right? With task allocation, with role allocation, in the integrated village building facility. Uh, between foundations and builds. It, does the order matter? Uh, we want to start with FreeCAD and collaborative literacy. Like, you got to learn how to use tools. Like, FreeCAD, collaboration, and 3D printing, I think, are pretty. Then welding. Then carpentry, like carpentry and welding. Um, like, welding. Welding and wham. That's a new so one. So basically, what this program wants to create is people that has all their all the abilities in in in, in a sense like uh, someone that can complete every certificate or are we trying to specialize people into a particular uh, no i wouldn't i wouldn't specialize people i would give provide general general production engineer training so you can design know how to design anything and know how to build anything because that kind of skill allows you to then innovate on for example the seeco home subsystems that would mean that you're going to be able to do the hydrogen energy system in the future because you got the generalist skill set that allows you to combine power electronics, microcontrollers, um, building science, welding, whatever, like all those skills that are needed there, energy calculations. Um, uh, so calculations and numeracy. Numeracy is a very broad term, but calculations. Um, 
physical calculations. I mean calculations across all the fields. Like not just here's how you do one kind of calculation. This is like all physical calculations. Mm -hmm. The idea is that once you see the pattern between the disciplines, you're able to be like you start learning, just beginning really good at learning new things. Like I really believe in an integrated approach because that way you can learn, you, you learn how to learn more and faster, like your rate of learning increases. Hydraulics. Well, I'm going to replace this with rapid prototyping techniques. Um, design for modularity and scalability. For lifetime, modularity, and scalability. And that's like the core modular. Lifetime scalable. Uh, rapid prototyping, there's hydraulics and pneumatics. Um, applied chemistry, like basics, like applied chemistry basics. Everything applied. Um, if we yeah, applied know, sciences, applied chemistry, applied sciences, um, rapid prototyping techniques, collaboration, collaborative literacy. Like I'm putting the stuff first on the left. Um, yeah, like this, like this design, lifetime design thing. Modular scalable. Physical calculations, including like how fast will your digester eat shit? <laughs> that, that's one. <laughs> Should be able to answer that. Oh, that's, that's, that's one, right? By yeah, digesters. Yeah, um, it is. Biodigester. <laughs> LOL. Uh, water, yeah, water management systems, water management, water management systems, i.e. closed loop water systems. Um, closed loop water systems. That's applicable to Mars. So there's definite future proofing. So water management as well? Yeah. Um, oh yeah, there's um we are we we wanna do hot dip galvanizing. That's like actually very important. We haven't done it yet, but we got to do it. It's it's too important. That's with respect to lifetime design. Uh, so there's some theory there, but that is so important. Um, metallurgy and well, there's metallurgy, like hot metal processing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Uh, there's praying of polyculture. There's automation. Um, foundations like computer aided design process, collaborative computer aided design, collaborative CAD. Yeah, well, I hear. I put uh, environmental management, and I think. This would, um, yeah, but what's that here. mean? 
Like yeah, like let's do like a specific thing. Like I don't know, maybe maybe not, but um. Enterprise. Um, like, are you gonna get into agriculture? I yeah. think that's too broad. No, no. no. Yeah. yeah. There's agriculture as far as in edible landscapes, and then transitioning out to larger landscapes. Like, you would have forestry if you're making your own lumber. So, forestry, lumber, forestry, forest management, sustainable forest management, or regenerative forest management. Um, again for so enterprises workflow design. Um, or more like parallel workflow design. Multi-dimensional landscapes. Capital management. Yeah, so like <laughs> debt, equity, uh, <laughs> finance term, uh -huh. finance term. I don't know. You tell me, right? No, like, it's like capital management is just a, such a mainstream word. But it's um, how about nine forms of capital? There's nine forms. Sourcing of and managing funds. And I think we're forgetting something very what? important. What? Open source. Open source literature. <laughs> <laughs> right. Open source business models. Oh yeah. Uh, how about we replace capital management with open source business models? Right. Um. Fine. I mean, financing. Financing is important. Um. Like, how do you finance things? Like, you want to build a CD, go home. Um, Resource allocation, or well, I think operations. Operations. Accountability. Yeah. Um, management. I mean, management. Operations management. Operations and management. Induction furnace? Yes, that that's under hot metal oh. processing, yeah. Um, but that is, let's let's do that. Uh, a very be a pretty no to it. Nowhere. There, yeah. Okay. Machine, like that's the it's a middle lay, lay multi operation kind of a thing. Screw machine, um, hot metal processing and alloying, hot metal processing, um, polymer chemistry that's applied chemistry. Um, because we want to study rubber. For roofs and tires. Um, 
water management foundation. Yeah, so the builds and foundations should all reinforce. Um, there's a design uh, documentation, like, let's see, foundations class documentation. Documentation. documentation for large-scale collaboration. So everything is about this large-scale collaboration. Um, uh, can we inject like the pressing world issues, like talking to people about mm -hmm. like, people? Is that good or no? Yeah, yeah I think it's good. Uh, like problem solving. Problem solving and pressing world issues. Yep. Oh, that's good. Problem, problem solving, pressing world issues. Um, what else? What else are some practical skills? What do we do today? Um, uh, software, uh, open source software stack, foundations class. Uh, there's programming, like, there's programming and open source software. Um, Well, we can, let's be specific, FreeCAD programming. Can we do that? FreeCAD and microprocessor programming. Okay, micro, how about microcontroller? Well, I mean, it's, you have to get specific. Programming and open source software. I mean, that, that to me means um, <coughs> FreeCAD and microcontrollers. Um, yeah, CNC circuits. CNC circuits? Mm -hmm. Oh, we forgot machine design, like all machine design, which is, yeah, yeah, machine design class. So, I mean, basically, like every day we go over here's a ball bearing, here's a hydraulic motor, so machine design. <laughs> yeah, like there, there's 500 of those items in the set. Machine design. There's like 500, like literally, like if you can learn about 500 primitives of technology, you know all of technology. I mean, 500 sounds like a lot, but it's not too much. Um, but we won't get to all of those. That would be the PhD track. Um, yeah. Oh, is that your so, boss? Say so again. I I think we just saw Paul's boss. Uh, oh yeah, on screen. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about his wife. I think his daughter. Oh. Masonry. Masonry? Masonry, yeah. Yeah, yeah where's the CBs? CBs, um... Yeah, there's yeah. two even. <laughs> um... We gotta cover electrolysis in the foundations. Uh, calcul electrolysis... Lumbering. Electrolytic... Electro... There's a the bunch of electrolysis stuff. stuff, like you can make hydrogen, you also make things like sodium hydroxide from salt and stuff like that. Haven't done that, but... Um, I think we can put it in foundations, like yeah. in foundation class. Yeah, yeah. Hydrogen. Um, hydrogen economy? Yeah, how about that, hydrogen economy? That's nice. Man. Wish I got this training. <laughs> Martin, who's teaching all of this? Uh, <laughs> I can do a lot of it. We we need we need to first things that we're weak on are we want to get a 
person that's really good and just contract them. Like, okay, here's a class or maybe a series of classes for like power electronics. Here's how you build the induction furnace thing. So, um, how many staff do we need for, um, well, initially we start like, we start with a few people, we, we build up, once we have more <coughs> staff needs, we, I think initially, very initially, we hire out, basically pay people to teach. Um, like, the question is though, like really good people that have the practical experience of building things, which that's gonna be like the tough part, but yeah, we'll, we'll do it. Uh, that's always the tough part people who have the integrated thing from theory to practice to build because those kinds of people are just there's not too many of them that's the problem um but we'll you know like the final project i would like to be actually where where the people there are teaching the five-day swarm build like or at least um leadership like lead at least a part lead a part of swarm build of a cd go home in five days like mastery a particular part that you can actually teach so you're teaching uh so you have the opportunity to run yeah I, what, guys what do you think in two years can you teach somebody to like run a five-day swarm build yeah i think so yeah six months okay great Sure. Um, well, yeah, collaborate, collaborate literature. Um, I actually, um, I actually think living roofs are the next thing. Like we haven't done that, but living roofs. Well, actually, we have the first building we did had, had a living roof. In fact. <laughs> right so uh we gotta get back to that in a very professional way in the, in the sense that 3d printers can get you a lot of the substrates and planting planting forms for living roofs so living roofs um and that's a good way like even if we don't get to the build part of that like at least knowing how to like say maybe for a final project people can get get enough insight to do a final project okay here's my living roof where i grow strawberries and, and do a closed loop water system integrating the roof think about that so there's aquaponics but then there's the living roof that filters um gray water maybe after the digester you have uh gray water on the roof feeding plants aquaponics integrated food waste management systems kind of stuff that's pretty hot um Um, oh, yeah, like, um, oh, we forgot, like, electric motor design, electric motor and generator design. Uh, that's, that's all in machine design, but electrical electrical motors and generator generators generator design that's in machine design but i don't know it's important oh yeah because i mean there's 3d printed motors we can do like right now we've done that actually so that's not too much yeah, that, that would be a good project to get actually a highly efficient 3D printed electric motor. It's like an axial flux motor. Um, open source axial flux electric motors. That's actually low hanging fruit if you if you know what I mean. See on the wiki for axial flux motors. Um,
Oh yeah, like, well, the big one is renewable energy. Topics? Yeah, a little. Okay. There's a lot, right? Isn't that enough? Yeah, that's for enough. Two, for two, for two, for two for years? Three program. Yeah, that's that's enough, right? Plenty. Plenty. Um, okay, cool. We got it. We did it. Congratulations, guys. Uh, I'm going to start moving stuff to the left. I'm going to put like filament maker, sawmill. We didn't even do sawmill, but we, we got to do it because we are going to do it. Um, at least like run one. So the production machine are like sawmill, filament maker, 3D printer, uh, tractor. I'd, li I'd like to see... Um, uh a well oh. drilling machine. Well drilling. Oh, you would? Okay. Yeah, you got it. Uh, For the build, the 3D printer, the build, CD home. What happened to the CD home as a specific item here? We don't put it in the builds? Yeah, we do, right? Oh. CB press is so good, it's here twice. Yeah. Uh, safety and workflow is probably foundations class. Uh, builds uh, rebar, rebar trusses. I think that's going to be. I think that's going to turn out pretty big. I mean, we, the initial experiment was extremely positive. Um, well, I think instead of building integration, P, integrated PV, maybe yeah. renewable energies, like more in general. Okay. So we gotta include CD go home. So what do you see as as like you get out of this program in two years? What are you doing right after it? Uh, I envisioned um, even before the end of the two years, actually being able to run. Uh, uh, um, a viable business enterprise, you know, using open source equipment. Mm -hmm. well, Distributed yeah. enterprise. Distributed enterprise. Uh, doing what? For, for example, uh, running a print farm, a print 3D farm, yes. printer farm. Mm -hmm. or, or building um, CD co homes. Yes. Print farm or CD co homes. I, I would say that too. Yeah. Uh, um, CD combs are uh, with uh, the wood, but also what about with um, CVs? CVs? Yeah, we need to develop that for next year. Like so, right now we're developing. We're like still refining the wood version, but next year, like it'll take us to December to refine the wood version. But probably after that, we're gonna like as soon as we have any energy. That's why. John, man, we need bodies ASAP. So mm -hmm. let's, you know, as soon as we formalize this, let's get people in. Let's see how we can fund them and all of that. You know, like, let's just, I think the money will come. Like we, we keep refining this program, like pimp this up a little bit. Like here's, here's the basics. Here's the cross. So what's our next step, John? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got to take this and organize it in a way that bureaucrats, would understand. Yeah. Oh. Um, 
and and like let me be clear i feel a little bit like a caveman here and and i think based on paul's comments like i may be a little too institutionalized to really um but maybe that's good like like i i'm unfortunately inside the mind of the dol so like you know a lot of my questions are more practical how, like how does a student um consume this now like uh, get at, at your intent in a practical practically speaking they show up they have a class they're gonna do practical application of it um design and build and then is that a subset of the whole two-year program that then transitions into now you're building the cd eco well uh, i think we um, could we could frame it as get a gerb building cd eco homes How's that? Sorry, so get, do what? Get a job building seed, seed eco homes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. And that's it. And <laughs> yeah. in it, that's like the outer thing. But when we talk to the people, this is, this is, a, this is much bigger than that, we tell them. Right. For the yeah, outside yeah. audience, we say, hey, build eco homes. Build affordable yeah. housing. And then we connect it, right. we, we pitch it as here's uh, affordable eco homes, scalable, modular, affordable eco homes, grow, um, designed for expandability. So that, that, I mean, that's, that's big. That's a trillion dollar enterprise. Um, we connect the social mission of solving affordable housing. So that means you get client, like once we get this nailed out, that means we can build like that hundred or a thousand houses for a city that needs affordable housing, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like your the, the answer to your question is we have to distill this down into a clear process, um, get it approved, and then that is the trigger to then bring the veteran community, uh, you know, yeah. into it in a way that's not there. You think you can take it from here, or because um, what we <laughs> wrote here is like this throwdown of like the stuff we do cover, and and you know in class. We talk about it, we do some of it, we repeat and repeat. You know, right now I know people are overwhelmed, but uh, initially people were super overwhelmed. Right now we're kind of settling down. But after six months, it'll be like, oh yeah, let me design this kind of deal. How, how, how close is this to what is happening currently in the six month apprenticeship? Well, in the six month apprenticeship, the, the focus is we're gonna build a bun like the second house next week in about a week or two uh, a third house in december so we're, we get more practice on building but interspersed is two and then aquaponic greenhouse we build that too interspersed is then two months of machines both cnc stuff and heavy machines so we're going like diving next near market ready tractor like right now we've been using the micro track and the tractor on the build site to grade and do other things so it's like man it's getting ready for prime time um building a bunch of machines like backhoe and other things um larger right. CNC torch table so yeah we're building all of that and things that are near product release it's and because it takes a lot of effort to develop a product release we're um we need bodies that's the thing this summer of extreme design build is, is two dozen people here and we're moving forward a lot in the actual builds and documentation of them so it's like the poor man's version of uh, <laughs> corporate R and D. Okay. <laughs> is, that, is that? I mean, fair, it, fair statement. <laughs> uh, I, I I think I think the only way to really know is to is for me to try. Just just try and put this into a structure, and then you tell me where I get it wrong. Well, the structure iterate. is yeah. I mean, if you take maybe like. Uh, uh, what's the closest thing to this like i mean is there a thing that teaches you how to build homes like yeah it's called carpentry right so, uh, so here we're but see carpentry it's like you typically do like one small part of this whole thing here it's like you're getting trained to like who's the closest like does anyone offer training who offers training that's a builder and they train like you mentioned uh harley davidson is there anyone in housing that does that uh, no and I mean, like the, the bigger issue here is that, from the perspective of of the Department of Labor or any like agency, they think in terms of like very discrete categories. And so, what you're talking about is like knowledge. Like you're building people's capacity to design and build anything. 
Yeah. Like, that immediately doesn't make sense to somebody who's not a part of, you know, this community of open okay, source collaborators. So, just take it, I, I would say just, we're teaching carpenters, because that's, that's a section okay. of what we do, and to meet the, I mean, carpentry, you know, there are some famous people that are carpenters, too, so I think that's pretty <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, so I think that's well, well I, they'll be well understood, right? Just frame it around it, because, I mean, that's true. That's what we do, except we do much more. But that's getting away from the the, the, the easy button right now is production technology. Okay, so... And so I'm not, yeah, okay. yeah, I'm not saying that it has to be... Uh, like fit the categories that they already have, but like one thing they already has production technologists. And so like what I'm going to do from here is turn this into just add this onto that essentially. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. I think I misspoke. I'm, I'm kind of slow here, but I was thinking more like the carpet. No, no, the production technologist is, that is the closest to this, this whole flowering of all kinds of disciplines. Yeah. Right. I think do that. Right. They're very vague terms, right? Vague. And, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up the the work process that they have again just so you can see like, um, <clears throat> so like, you know, production to like, DC AC electronics semiconductors like you've already talked about that, mm -hmm. so soldering teamwork computer skills like come on like that's oh man you, you're obvious you're obviously covering all of this stuff already Everything. yeah yeah so um well. And, and like this apprenticeship, as it was designed in 1999, was a thousand hours, which the is is equivalent to a year, roughly. So like, yeah, you know, I'm taking I'm taking all of the topics that you talked yeah, yeah, about, yeah, and yeah. Um, so oh, yeah, yeah, man, production technologist, and I'm just like getting confused because how we market this, right? Because you don't want like if you say production technologist, it's like. They I want to make sure that whoever comes to us when they're actually looking at this, they're seeing the bigger vision, right? But this is just this exactly is like satisfying right. the other side, which is the formal side, right? The market exactly, side, yeah, the market yeah, yeah. Facing side, yeah. Okay, so we're good. We're good. Just do yeah. it. Production technologist. Right. Make our thing fit into the production technologist. Um, what will be the next step on your thing on on your side then? Um, taking the blob so taking this spaghetti chart and then rough categories um so, so just grouping so, so subgroupings um and putting them into a hierarchy uh yeah. or yeah. even if it's not a hierarchy it's it's literally just start to finish yeah. we, these are this is everything they cover and then estimating our allocations for yeah, yeah. subtopics um and then maybe a job description uh, that sort of outlines like the, the pedagogical model. So like, I don't know if this is accurate or not, but based on your, what you're saying is like, you've got foundations in class, yeah. you've got some element of design, some yeah. element of build, and Perfect. that's the life cycle for, like if you're talking about CEB, there's a lot of different foundations in class that can go into that. Soils, you know. Uh, Mechanical design, stru structure, hydraulics. Civil engineering, right. So it's like in a five-day CEB module, yeah, yeah. You, you could have, each day would probably look like this, go through that cycle potentially, and that could all be a part of like the first phase of yeah. the curriculum yeah, yeah. where you're gaining the tools. And then you know the second phase would be more advanced use of the tools in practice. And then phase three is like you're building the fucking home. Yeah. Um, and note that the approach here is very generic and what i would say is that so let me let me throw some more bubbles to confuse you here so so here like for example you mentioned the ceb but just think about it so ceb the ceb example and i'm on page two ceb example it's got microcontrollers because it's automated coding Hydraulics, mechanical design, automation, welding, workflow. There's, there's like some 
earth science in there, right? Because you got to know what the composition of the material is. Soil science. Structural engineering. FEA for analyzing finite element analysis and FreeCAD for analyzing the like the actual design of the CEB. Uh, mechan like uh, blueprints, uh, technical drawings. Right. Um, there's, uh, I don't know, architecture involved. Like here's how you design with CEBs. Uh, calculations. Like um, calculations of how much, how tall a building you could build with these. Um, what else? Is there chemistry? Like, is there a curing process for at all? Oh, you could do like chemistry of yeah. If you do stabilized cement chemistry, like there's we can include so you can bake rocks with cantal heaters to make for example lime concrete off solar like crazy stuff so that's what we plan that's the direction we plan on going so basically we take um yeah that's that's the kind of stuff it includes cement stuff um includes uh, I don't know, like integrated site design, because if you're digging the earth, you can create a pond with, where you dug the soil for your house, like site design. I don't know. You can I mean, there, there, there's also business, like you can even take it into the business thing of, you know, estimating costs and revenues for a given site and, um, you, you know, structure size. and. Uh, there's projecting. production engineering if you want to build these for a business. Um, like there's a, so there's the enterprise. Um, you can talk about solar energy because you can run this brick press on solar energy with a solar power cube. Man, it could, it's like, that's the thing. But the general thing is that there could be automation, like this kind of stuff, like this, the first stuff in there. Man, this, this applies to just about everything problem right so there's like a generic formula that when you take something you study it from different sides yeah but so then yeah. that begs the question then yeah, I mean that begs the question then if if there's uh, a common core yeah to all of the all of the bills yeah does that need to be separated and articulated as a part of the foundational first phase of uh, the curriculum, yeah, yeah. or do you want to leave it? It's like modular, it's really under modular design because the modular design covers the fact that there's like 500 technology primitives and they make up all of technology, all of the technosphere. Um, and it's kind of covered in machine design, you know, so it's, it's in there. But yeah. Um, like maybe you wouldn't have to go all the way back to first principles or all of this stuff, mm -hmm. but like what well, you know, there's a lot of overlap here. Yeah, there is. And so like the builds could be just ver different versions of practical um, of, of design and build portions of life cycle, but there is a common foundation to all of them. Yeah, um, there is, and that's. I would say. For production technologists, it's it's uh, machine design and production technology. So we have machine design here. What about production technology? So that means understanding all kinds of tools and how things are built, right? So production technology survey, survey of production technology. What do you think? Fabrication, yeah. production. I mean, it, I mean, I think I think within that though, you would have even before that, you would probably touch on the applied physics, chemistry a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mechanical power transfer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, foundations of power electronics. So, like, yeah. Like the way I'm looking at this is, some things come before other things, and so that's the first step, and. 
once I have sort of a picture of what would be a, a common to all builds, um, that would be an estimate for the foundations. And then there's an application portion that constitutes all the builds and um, or the and then same thing for the design. Yeah. Yeah. But but like we're we're already getting away from the the bottom line that we have to you know cross for the I'm mixing my metaphors here, but like we're we're getting getting away from like the thing we have to do to to check the block to get approved as an apprenticeship. And what is that? And that is just give them a picture, like give them a warm and fuzzy that you know what students are going to do from day one until they graduate. So how do we address um, that? How do we frame it? Though? Categorizing, yeah, categorizing yeah, what I said initially. Um, the the trade crosswalk. Trade, right? yeah, the trade, yeah, yeah. That that that's a part of it, and then the 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 end picture is, you know. Um, like topic like topic or like general category of instruction so it'd be like uh fabrication and you know, you know welding and yeah, working yeah, yeah. you know woodworking and machining all that stuff and then that topic has an hour allocation and then the next topic would be um like collaboration tools so you've got your wikis and your free yeah. pad and, and all that other stuff right so so that that's sort of the level of picture we need to pre you know present um if you, because what, what they're going to see is, is oh, you're doing a well drilling machine in an aquaponic greenhouse and an induction furnace as builds, and they're immediately going to, to like think nobody could possibly do all of that exactly. in two years. Exactly. It's a, that's impossible. Right. Yeah. So maybe. So like there, are, there. Are, yeah. We underemphasize the things that we're going to build, but we overemphasize the the techniques that get us oh, there because it's true. really like that it's a generative set of techniques that we're teaching that now you now that you have it and you have the modules these things yeah. are a few days each it's a week like with right. a whole class if you've got 12 24 100 people right it's five days per build yeah yeah Actually, so really good so look i mean i definitely have enough to take a first swing at it and mm. and again have you tell me where i'm wrong and then we just keep iterating like i, I don't know any other way to go through this especially yeah. since i've physically never been there yeah yeah good I'll although i don't know it doesn't look like you have enough space back there for me <laughs> sorry we're building some more three thousand square foot <laughs> next week <laughs> yeah yeah um, okay. So what I suggest is do do your live uh, cloud editable doc share share it in progress, man. Just start it and and wherever you're doing that, or maybe you want to continue in this doc or in a more like a Word doc. Okay. Well, you can continue in this one, and and you can say you can start. I don't know if you work well with docs like this where it's kind of visual. You don't do you work like that or no? No, you like the spreadsheets. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I do. No, the spreadsheet was only for like very straightforward. Here's a task. Here's an outcome. We have to compare things on like dimensions. Um, I'm happy to keep working off of this. It's fine. Yeah. Keep keep going at it. And we're, basically, we're like organizing, kind of making it look like actual curriculum. Yeah, that's what we got to do. Right. Um, the question about the the comparison to the other curriculums coming from other places, because uh, you know sometimes you go to sign up to a university because the campus is so amazingly fun to be in or whatever, you know the the limit is so hard to to pass to even get in. Mm. So there's more to the curriculum than just the curriculum, right? So so when folks look at this uh, production technologist description that we put together and then at the other production technologists what do we want to see what do we want them to see that's different qualitatively it's like hey you know what between the oac campus experience versus yes. all this other it's like what is the the fundamental thing that should be communicated 
well, we know the answer to that, but I don't know if that they like that. I mean, here it's an integrated experience, mm -hmm. right? But, yeah, I, I would I would separate strategies for the people, the people who authorize things and for everyone yeah, who yeah. wants to participate. Yes. You know, like, like pr production technologies means nothing to the people that I work with. What they're going to see is, holy shit, they're, like, welding stuff and using it on a farm, and they're growing their food and they're eating it, like, that that's what I care about. That's what I want. And oh, production technologist, cool. I've never heard. And like, keep in mind, this thing hasn't been live since 1999. All right. It was like before a lot of these people have been born. Okay. okay. Photos. Send me photos. I need. I need. I need. I need some content to send out. You want photos? Got <laughs> I got photos. I got photos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, you start going through this, man. I don't know if you really <laughs> want to ask for this. It's the video gallery of okay. thousands of videos and pictures. Okay, cool. Um, Like go for up to the very top, like yeah, um, man. There's like if you go in, some of those are yeah. like galleries, like co collected things. Um, yeah. So. Oh man, yeah, you're gonna. That's that's a wild seeded mushroom that just popped up. Anyway, uh, well, I mean, one thing, Paul, though, that like you bring up a good point uh, that I think we really think about like we need to put a uh, like a human fit. like the, the the veterans need to look at osc and see the like and be able to easily imagine themselves there mm -hmm. um and like that that is the crux that's the holy grail really of yeah. the transition well, of those terms i was like i have no conception yeah um jeff is at the checkout of bernard's in the corner then too Great, I'll fix it right now. Yeah, uh, we'll just put Ken's face on it, and and he'll be our front man. <laughs> <laughs> do you need to talk to him? Okay, no, cool. I, oh, got it right now. Let's get some influencers. He says he's gonna do it right now. Okay, hold hold on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I'll I'll send you a text when it's ready. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks. Bye bye. And plumbing, well, welding as well. So we can basically combine, so we can get 2,000 hours. And we can then put OSC material into it. Yeah. So can you do that? Can you take leadership on that? For sure. Yeah, I would love it. Please do. OK. Does that apply to Ken too, or? or uh, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll take uh, Christian's lead. <laughs> I'll collaborate on that. Okay, you guys do that. I mean, Great. yeah, you guys know how. To, you can do a lot of it. I mean, you've got a lot of materials on the wiki and elsewhere that uh, what we did today, the all of that. Now, the only thing, like, I'd like to maybe clarify here, um, specifically, so you've got curriculum to be specific like what are we doing so what goes into curriculum is it an outline like how like day by like what is that like day by day schedule so yeah. it depends who the audience is so do like maybe for the two year like do as best as we can for a hundred weeks week by week schedule can you do that so here's the potential on this, like for example, like we were talking about the CEB press, that's about all these elements or 3D printing or collaborative design, like, yeah, right? So do a week by week. And then what about the exams? Like, what are the exams there? We need to define, are we going to actually write up uh, things like written exam questions or competencies like learning objectives? Like, is that what we're doing there? 
I mean, I'm trying to, I'm struggling with like the curriculum so, so, format. Yeah, I mean, my impression here is that like the ultimate test and the most efficient way to get a competency is like you test out of something you, or, or you, you, you do the thing that you've been studying to do. So if you've been studying 3D printing, you 3D print something. If you've been studying welding, you weld to, to a certain, you know, standard. Um, and like the, to me, the written exam thing, there's a lot that would have to go into developing the exams potentially that you can bypass by simply saying like, can you well, or can you 3D print, or um, well, we can do yeah, I don't know, am I, am I well, maybe, okay, maybe what we do for next time, maybe next meeting we go and actually write up those exams, because th those are like very specific tasks and I can think of the, some very specific ones. Do we want to like do that yeah. next week? Yeah. Well, I think I, I mean I think honestly, it, at least from my perspective, next week is going to be me give, showing you what I've done, okay. so that you can like you know, I, I I don't know I mean like I don't want to slow you guys down, but um, to me the 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 written exam and the and the the competency measurements are an output of the the like curriculum in a more in a what format more refined than it currently is. Yeah. I'm wondering how maybe three of you can, Christian, John, you can collaborate on organizing that. Like, how, how would you do that? Is there a way to parallel it? I mean, I think you could take these tasks uh, and or the, the builds and the foundations, and for each one of them, I'm sure, you know, given the knowledge in the room, you could figure out how you would test that conceptually. And then, that, then it's just a matter of putting questions to the specific topics but we may uh, like it may answers may reveal themselves to us as we develop categories and um, you know as we sort of organize things by like type um, that you know create a natural progression from collaborative design to fabricating something in real life yeah Christian, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's a uh, it's it's the right way of doing it. So what are you doing so, next on this? You, Christian. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna go to the trade crosswalk. Put it all my uh, yes, no's, maybe's, and then. Well, we can we can meet um, by video call or maybe through the spreadsheet and start working on it. Okay. But yeah. Uh, send a link to the uh, when you say trade crosswalk. Send a link to that so I can take a look at it on my computer. Which one was that? Uh, I I got you. You have it done. Yep. And John, like on the pictures, do spend like as much time as you like. For example, like when you saw the big gallery, like you might find like big dumps of like in progress and ugly pictures, and then there's like collections. So if you see like a bunch of mess like that, you know, say the pictures of aquaponics that were like all just not not spectacular looking, there might be other collections that are like holy cow, this is amazing. So there's like a yeah. lot of different places. Don't don't think that if you've seen one that there isn't another one that's like really cool. On the same topic. Okay. Yeah. Um. Got it. So, so my task is going to be okay organizing and um, Trade attempting to put these into a hierarchy and pull out commonalities that we can, you know, si simplify for the application process. Uh, I did have a question yeah. for Ken and Christian. What, what's preventing you guys from just saying I'm working? and learning at OSE, here's a link, and here's all the topics that I'm going to cover in the next two years with the wiki, uh, you know, page associated with that. Yeah, okay. In my case, and I'm pretty sure in Kansas as well, we're in a tourist visa. So I don't think we're there, like, 
they are expecting us to be in a program now. It's not an educational visa. So no, 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 I, in, yeah. No, so I get that, that case, but what I'm saying is, yeah. You, but you you know when your tourist visa is going to end, right? And so, they, like, the visa office just wants to know that you've met the criteria for the thing. And, and like, what we've discussed is that OSE has already met that criteria in spades, and they've been around for 10 years, and they have this amazing wiki that has all of the shit that you're about to do. So, like, you know, it, if they're not asking for a specific format of a curriculum, is is there a risk in just giving them that information of what you intend to do over the next few years at this like okay, legit okay. nonprofit? I don't know. I'm asking. Yeah, I get you. Know. I get you. Yeah, yeah, I I think the the problem comes from OSC in that sense because they are not uh, educational like a formal edu educational organization. So if we send them the link of the wiki or the web page without any like program in which we're going what are we sending really okay okay yeah yeah so so it's like a credibility issue uh, or legitimacy exactly. issue okay understood uh -huh. yeah Got so it. the answer is you create that program and when it's on paper that's a reality Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Um, I'll, I'll also share the actual application form so you can actually have a look at, uh, see, what, see what that's like. Uh, Marginus, are you seeing the spreadsheet? Yeah. Yep. I saw that. The, the okay, crosswalk. So yeah. 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 I mean, you can, but for a two-year program, we need like a, a few it. more things. So can we? So that's electrical carpentry, three D printing. Like maybe we could take out, add to the trade crosswalk. Can you do a few more things like take hydraulics, and we can simply check yes or no, and and modify that for for OSE. Like, can we modify that? Yeah, like that? yeah, like thermal cutting. Well, that's yeah. CNC torch right there. Uh, well, mm -hmm. no, that's that's different. Thermal cutting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but. On the other uh, window, there's production technologies. Yeah. So we are oh, yeah, yeah. adding, you know what I mean? Yeah. We're adding all trade crosswalk to production technologies. Oh, okay, okay. Um. Well, but like electrical and welding. It's pretty much the same as production technologies. So, so just keep in mind that the source of all of these uh, modules, let's call them, let's say each row in the trade crosswalk is a module. The source of all these, like the electrical cat, um, list, is a four year program. So everything listed there was designed to be covered in a four year program. So that like the implication isn't that we have to make this like we have to be conscious of the time required to cover these things according to the source. You know that like in terms of um, thoroughness, like that uh, that that's where we got this. That's where. I'm Sounds like what. This thousand that adds up to nine hundred thirty-three hours. What's there on uh, production technologist thing? Uh, if I share my screen, can you let me share my screen? Okay. John. Did John John did you drop? I'm looking at the production technologist thing, and it only says nine hundred thirty-three hours. So is that the four-year program supposedly? I think uh, he's muted. Sorry about that, guys. Um, um, not sure what production happened. technologist adds. Uh, I'm not sure. The, the, the bottom line. The bottom line is. Each. Go ahead, Marjan. Nine hundred thirty-three hours is what the total is for the production technologist. You're saying that's a four-year program. Close again. Is that what he was saying? 
Sorry, we didn't hear you. You froze up. Uh, the 933 hours for the production technologist. It's 120 days. Uh, uh, so... The, yeah. Uh, so... Um, the product, like, registered apprenticeships have on-the-job training and two buckets of time that they count. And so... Like, it's like not super strict about the hour counts per task. Um, they just, they're trying to just get a sense that this is going to fill two years or however long that you say the program. So like the employer dictates what the, what the time like is. Okay. But this is, was, I just try to capture the data accurately. So what was the nine, 933? Was that supposed to be like the four year program? Is that what you said? Or the, that's a two year no, what I was, no, what I was trying to say is that when I went to carpentry and electrical programs to pull what the curriculums were. Mm -hmm. I pulled from like three and four year, uh, like I, I pulled from the most most extensive tra training you could possibly find, open source. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, and so like the, the, the time allocation that they use is irrelevant to us because you're not creating, you know, union carpenters or journeyman carpenters. Like that's not what OSE does. And so we don't have to pass that standard um, for each one of those trades. It was just to give you a sense that like all of the shit on here is uh, a, like a, a part of the, the most extensive training you can possibly get in each one of these fields, according to the industry. I'm confused on what we're gonna do next. Or maybe we wait for John to, to organize stuff and take it from there. Yeah, I mean, like, the way I'm looking at this is, like, the, the immediate target is get this thing registered as an apprenticeship. Okay. I think we'll just let you do that and forget about anything else. <laughs> oh, no, Ken, Ken and um, Christian, can you guys, can you do stuff? You got enough to go on? or Because I don't feel like I, I know enough what you'd be doing. Can you guys continue or not really? Well, I think we can all uh, help. Okay. But so I, I want to get it straight. So all this production technology content is w the the whole curriculum. Like there's nothing. There's no more information about it. This is all we have to present. Correct. So so yeah. this is the. This is the standards that some third party developed in 1999 to register as an apprenticeship, um, pulled so into we, Excel. We can do it. We can do it like in in, in a few days. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like yeah. Any, yeah. 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 Um, that's right. But it it just won't be approved yet. Yeah. Because yeah. OS OS we won't be OSC won't be tied to it. Right, I mean, we can do that, and then is that something you, you would submit? Uh, I'm not... Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I definitely could do that. The only problem is that, like, they're... Uh, yeah, yeah, I could, I think, <laughs> I, I could do that. Yeah, there's like... Yeah, yeah, okay. The organizational part is what, what has to happen. We, we did a good job doing the brain dump with all the topics now we got to add structure to it like organize it and, and add more structure like the things that they understand to it yeah exactly take taking what you did and making it look enough like production technologists that they just rubber stamp it. yeah mm -hmm. right done, done okay. deal. <laughs> paul what do you say but I love the collaboration. I think uh, we're doing great. We're just <laughs> amazing. We're just an amazing, most amazing group of five people today. But, but, but keep in mind, <laughs> keep in mind that the education pathway is now open. And so everything that you're talking about 
in terms of exams and certifications and and like the broader picture of instruction and education like that will still have to be fleshed out for yeah. the application or for the education route yeah yeah right so like all yeah this is, this is just a small first step mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that helps Ken and Christian uh yeah right yeah that makes sense okay okay so let's finish here all right great i i will have something to you by friday how about that is that okay that sounds great yeah that's true also yeah. thanks john okay. okay and ken and christian let's just keep in touch to, to uh work together okay, okay. Right. yeah thanks yeah. thanks guys thank you thank, thank you. you thank you so much good night, night.